He used to link arms and kick. <laughs> <laughs> They'd walk up to you and start kicking. What, dan on the dance floor? <laughs> now, he inspired a whole generation of kids. Mm. After he started, you'd see him at the park, they'd be all dancing around like Benji. The it blue stunk. The blue vein cheese. Yeah. What? <laughs> Can't throw the window. What? It's very expensive. It, it had the blue veins running through it. That's what it's called. Blue vein cheese? Yeah. And you threw it out. <laughs> this is the maddest place on the planet. <laughs> Dancing. The only show where you're allowed to do it without shoes. Andrew Jones, one of the greatest players of all time. Cuddles and kisses go a long way, especially when you're in trouble. Oh, the horse has bolted. Look at the big fellow go in. Imagine if he wanted to fire. <laughs> They're very horny and very aggressive. Are we allowed to put that to air? Sydney, stay classy. I love everyone for making me feel this good. Welcome to Freddie and the Eighth. Great to be back for another week. A number of defamation cases outstanding after our performance last week, but rave reviews nonetheless. That bloke that came out of DCM's chewing his face off. Yes. Is he one of them suing, <laughs> suing us? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He's suing what for? Us. You can't sue someone if it's the truth. <laughs> this is true, Brad. Imagine Welcome. how many ulcers he had in his mouth, too. Yeah. We leave him alone. Good, Coming uh... up on the show today, more Fred in the Eighth games. I watched it. I watched that um, cheese rolling back. My God, that is how does crazy. Been, surely there's been fatalities in cheese rolling. People breaking necks. They have HIA, you reckon? In that? I'm assuming no. the uh, the angle just doesn't do it justice. You just mustn't be able to get because actually when they're sitting at the top, you can see them like <laughs> and then they start holding running. themselves up. So it must be nearly vertical. Have you, ever, have you done the running of the balls? No, no. I don't see how that would be fun. No, no, not at all. No. I think there was a big blow-up because... Animal cruelty. So, no, someone told me that it's quite a cultural thing yes. for, for the Espanyols, the Spanish. But a lot of the... Someone told me the Aussies and the Kiwis would get there full and people would be standing there and the bulls come in and they go, boom. <laughs> knock them out in Just front. Just nudge them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be unlike the Australians, wouldn't oh, it? Yes. Yeah. Also coming up, Benji Marshall, who we all remember debuted as a schoolboy... Back in 2003, he's wow. giving an 18-year-old a crack at 5.8 this weekend. Did he debut against Newcastle? I don't remember, but I remember he came off the bench and played fullback and he was a schoolboy. Well, I, I remember he played against Newcastle because myself and Bedsy got rested from an origin and he just lit it up. It was 2004, I remember. It was 2004 he debuted. 20 years ago. Wow. We'll have a look at the highlights later in the show. Uh, also, favourite footy sledges. Now, Andrew loves sledging. I don't think Brad was a great sledger. No. I actually spoke with Ricky Stewart earlier today for a, a, something else we're doing. Great sledger. Oh, the, the best. best. Was Alfie a good sledger? No. No? No. Did he sledge? No. no. Ben, Benny was good. Kevy Wal uh, Stephen Walters was good. <laughs> Benny and Kevy would sledge each other. My first time I played against Ricky... <laughs> Obviously, on my wall, that's footy photos, and Ricky was... I loved Ricky. After the game, I rung, rung my mum and said, go to my bedroom and rip down all those posters of Ricky Stewart. <laughs> I still love Ricky. He's a fantastic Walked player. off nearly One crying. The yeah. And they beat us by 50. It's like, mate, white flag. Mm. Please stop. He walked to a scrum. You just wouldn't get his... Try not get eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> you... You, what are you doing, Eddie? Blah, 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 blah. Just <laughs> relentless. Oh, dear. He's got, you know, teams have a themes of the week or whatever. So, like, you'll put up your big poster in the dressing room and your know, inspirational words. There's been some vision snapped inside the Raiders change room this week. F them. Yeah. Sign says F them. So it says. Well, Bose, the great That's Bose very Bose Ricky. Do it responsibly. <laughs> the great Bozo used to go to Terry Hill and Spud and all that and go. Give him a bit of verbal. <laughs> <laughs> Terry was... Give him a bit of verbal. Terry just wouldn't shut up. And he had a lisp the whole time. Oh, no, no one could tell what he was saying. He'd just be... Wouldn't Spud? shut up the Spud whole was, time. The Spud? What was the story about the kangaroo tour that time? You're, were you playing like a French... Was it a French team or...? Um, and you were... Did, didn't Bozo not say to go easy on them or something? And they were in uh, the end by, the first at, half? At half time, so I was in 19... I played in a game. Yeah. So yeah. I was in 1994. And he said, look... He said, let's just get out of here. Yeah. Let's just win the game and go. So by half time, they were just bashing us. <laughs> they were just elbowing. It was so violent. And then he said, it's open slather. <laughs> and then just go out there, protect yourselves. And Ian Roberts just <laughs> give it to this bloke. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. They end up having a fight. I reckon it was one of the only fights I ever had. Oh. This little little French bloke come oh. up <laughs> like that. <laughs> Just went bang straight in the... We we pretty. Him, <laughs> cut him straight across the eyebrows. <laughs> and his actually wife come half by running on the field. Oh, really? The same game, Terry was in a fight, Terry Hill, in the grandstand. What? Mate, it was crazy. The brawl was crazy. So it was in France? It was in France. They love it, the French. Don't oh, they it. love fighting. Oh. They used to link arms and kick. <laughs> <laughs> They'd walk up to you and start kicking. What, dance? On the dance floor? <laughs> so like, TCMs. Oh, mate, he was there. <laughs> Jaw swinging like <laughs> hammock. <laughs> All right. Oh, that just got random. That was so, a crazy uh, brawl. Joey and I love our racing. Freddie, mm. Freddie likes watching them. Not, not a punter. Oh. Adelaide Cup Day this week. Mm. So here's some vision of what happened. Now, the horse Ahmad, ridden by Zach Spain, loses his irons. What are irons? So your, your stirrups. That's it. It's where, you, where, you, oh, right. where your feet go in. So he's got no support, which means he's sitting on his nads for the 3,200 metres. Look at him bareback. Up and down. Yeah. You imagine? Look at him. Oh. Every buck of the horse. <laughs> and here he comes making a run. Stop it. Here he comes. Imagine his chook's neck. <laughs> It'd be just Could you imagine raw. if you're on this horse? Look, what a great bit of horsemanship. He gets he's straight got no on. irons. Look at his... Look, he's squeezing his knees together to keep himself up. I know what he's squeezing. Yeah. Mate, imagine his his chooks next would just be red. <laughs> so he had imagine a, the poor and his groin and a and redox go. bath for his nuts. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Zach Spain. Ran fourth. Wow. There's, there's another way to do do your money. Horse loses its irons. Remember the time? Remember Miss Finland? Remember it was uh, when it was Miss Finland. Was it Miss Finland? Or more joyous. More joyous. Remember, it, um, Buck jumped at the start trying to qualify for the slipper that time. No, that was Belle de Jour, wasn't it? No, 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 no. That was in the slipper. That was in the slipper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. Anyway. That's, that's neither here nor there. Um, round first. First round reactions. What would you like? Week one. It's hard to go past Las Vegas. It was very impressive. And the fans played their part. The ground was incredible. Um, and then the players played their part. This game was awesome. Watch a Manly. I always, always thought Manly one of the best teams when they play well. They're the best teams to watch. Mm. Um, they spread the ball a lot. They just scored some great tries. I think it was absolutely awesome. And watching the Roosters, they found their mojo. They beat the, uh, the team they made to a grand final. So I've got to say that was all... Uh, Jason Saab's out for six well weeks, done. by the way. Yeah, hear me. That's bad. Big loss, eh? Mm. So he'd, have Big long, loss. he'd have long hammies. <laughs> he'd have long hammies. Uh, mine was the Storm winning again. 22 years in a row. Just goes to show the, the genius of Craig Bellamy, the way he prepares his team over the summer. There is never any rust. They're all rock hard fit. Know their jobs, especially defensively. Where this do you rate that defensive performance? Oh, maybe right up there. Well, keeping a team like Penrith to zero. It was the right Nathan Nathan Cleary's never been. Until kept this to is the first time he's been first held to zero. Watching the game down the sideline. Like, did you did you think they'd have to crack? Like you, you, you get a great view down there of the attrition of the game. But like, we're up there in the box thinking, yeah. surely Penrith gets through here. Like that was superhuman what they did. I think got to the stage where they just kept building confidence, so you yeah. just keep building confidence. And then once you sort of hold them out a couple of times, you go, you know what? We can keep doing this. Yeah. You watch, there was some shots there where you just had a high shot and you would have got the better view where the ball was going to the left. And then there would have been nine Melbourne jerseys all running towards the ball. Yeah. And that was that seemed to be the case the last ten minutes. So they were committed. They weren't getting beat that night. Who, what surprised you week one? Tell you what, what I did, I do I did a bit of my bike ride. I went down to Victoria and they've got a centre of excellence down there now. And they had a couple of teams play. They had two two games, uh, one female game. I've got to say, uh, if nurtured, there'll be some very good players coming out of Victoria very soon. This Centre of Excellence had four fully lit fields um, with a full um, Centre of Excellence, um, great dressing sheds, great gym, offices. Melbourne will actually train there on the way to airports. It's 10 minutes from the airport. And then there was a carnival outside the ground. So wow. it's one of the first times, actually, I think the game's getting really serious and actually developing, you know, having a real crack at rugby league down there. And obviously they've spent, it's like upwards of 20, 30 million on this whole development. It's incredible, I'm telling you. You watch in the next... fully lit fields. In the next 10 years, Melbourne will be half Victorians, without a doubt. 
Mm, that's good. Fantastic. Big, um, young Sewer Fire Long is a Melbourne product. I didn't yeah, realise. Yeah. Pole, Pole, who plays for the Tigers. Fenua Pole, yeah. Fenua Pole. He's a good player. Uh, Mahade Fenua. Yeah. He was the first one, wasn't he? He was the first, yeah. But honestly, like for the time they've been in, it's been disappointing. They've been in a long time and they've been in semi-finals the whole time. Mm. You know, but it's now only that they're getting the, the systems again put in. All their junior teams, Harold Matthews, SG Ball, Jersey Flegg are all playing in the uh, New South Wales competitions. Uh, they're doing very well. So the Howard Matthews is actually all Victorian, yeah, right. and they were on. They were still in the top eight, I think, last time I looked. So, yeah, it was very impressive. Uh, my surprise was Jamal Fogarty. I thought with Jack White and leaving, he'd be under all sorts of pressure. Had the inexperienced young five eight Ethan Strange with him, but the more responsibility, the better he went. He 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 controlled totally controlled the game with his kicking game. And his coach, his mentor, was absolutely the best at it. He could control a game with his kick. He could rescue sets, bad sets with great kicks. Jamal Fogarty, he was incredible. Jeez, oh, he played well. What about a couple of spirals he yeah. put up? He gave him a whack, didn't he? He yeah, hits he him was, a bit uh, different. Do you see how he hit it? He hits him like the balls. Um, uh, what's the word? Towards horizontal. The he, no, facing that way, not like that. He doesn't face the ball. He faces nearly like that. Mm. So horizontal with the yeah. tie line. Yeah. Because Matt Burton hits him. He's directly square down the mm. field. I used to hit mine probably at about 30 degrees. Like that. Like that. Mm. He was hitting him like that. Yeah. And nailing him. It's going to be a long year for dot, dot, dot. Well, if you can't control the ball, that was... There was one team, Cronulla, that won without possession. You just, especially early on, you need to you need to be able to control the ball. Watching Brisbane and some teams just cough up the ball, you just can't do it. Mine is Zach Lomax. Until he commits, if he's going to stay or not, every week there's going to be talk. And the Dragons, they're a very high-profile club. If Zach Lomax each week dodges it, whether he's going to stay or whether he's going to go, or he wants to play centre or where he wants to play... Have you heard him being interviewed? Has he been no, interviewed? No, he no. hasn't been interviewed. So there's a way to stop it. Come out and do something about it. Come out and just say, you know what, I'm staying here the rest of the year. If I play on the wing, I play on the well, wing. The club said he's staying. They're not going to let him go. Well, then all he has to do is come out and say, that's it. I'm staying for a year. You know what? He's a good winger. He's, he's Why a good is winger. he so against playing on the wing? Oh, I don't know. Because it's all, yeah. mate, hopefully back it's, in the old days, hopefully everyone, it's not image, everyone joke about wingers. But now he's, do, he's a weapon out there. Mate, they do more work than anyone the yeah, wing is these days. Front rollers, aren't they? Mate, I don't know why anyone would want to play centre. Why would you want to play centre and not wing? Well, you don't get the ball at centre. <laughs> you never Unless get it. Unless you play a certain style. I think, from what I understand, his designs were set on playing fullback. Right. And so he feels he's lost that, but then the other insult is he's playing on the wing, not, the, not back well, in the centre. there was talk of playing 5'8". Yeah. Uh, you know what? He could be one of the really great wingers. There's very few people that can go up in the air yeah. and catch him in his hands. So he, he gets higher than everyone. Most of them are sort of still catching like that. He's got him in his hands. He's one of the best at it. I know um, there's been sort of a train I'd of still have him at centre. You would? Yeah. There's been a train of thought that he's potentially an origin player. Could yeah, he, could he be an origin winger? Because mm. yeah. he's big, strong out... I mean, you, coming, out of trouble. Trouble. coming out of trouble. Yeah. So who are the wingers in Origin? When I coached him in the 16s, I reckon, 16s or 18s, New South Wales team, playing the game, scored the try in the corner to half by winner for us, then ran in field, kicked the field goal as a winger. Kicked so the field he played goal on the wing it. back then? Yeah. Well, what's he doing? He's a winger, not a centre back then. He, he was playing a year up, I think. Him and Payne oh. might have played a year up. So he scored the try. Did he play in that Then team ran in, kicked Bradman? the field goal to win the game. Uh, I think he's a year older than Bradman. All right, more Dragons chat coming up later in Freddie in the 8th. It's, I'm very pleased the Dragons fans have at least got something to smile about for the moment. Spencer Lanier this week, eight weeks at the NRL Judiciary for the slur against Ezra Mam. Jonathan Thurston's come out and said he thought the, the penalty didn't necessarily fit the crime in line with uh, education and awareness around discrimination, etc. Um, not sure there's too much to add to it, really. It's, it's a long suspension. I think sufficient. He's not racist. Let's get on with it. 
He's so is this, is this going to be a precedent where if someone says maybe something homophobic, will it be automatically eight weeks? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? No, I don't. Marcelo Montoya, he yeah, got four weeks. He got less, yeah. But once again, like the Marcelo one, no one said anything. You know why? Microphones, microphones. on the field. They definitely have to debate whether microphones um, should be still used or to what degree. I don't think they should. But you're not saying it's not the microphone's fault that he said that on the field. No, I totally agree with that. No. But there's other things that happen. Just the one that's been offended. Just language. In, I'm not. I'm not talking about it. I'm just talking about language in general. Yeah. You know, I just don't think the microphones need to catch language in general. Players um, went in and you know Payne Haas and uh, Billy Walters had reports. So. Now, what was said, what was said. Mm. So let's not worry about that. But I think in general, I think we can take microphones out of the Get middle. Get rid of the microphones on the field. Get them out of the middle. All right. Well, there's your man back in front of a home crowd this week at Suncorp. Let's see how he bounces back. Let's hope he does. Big year ahead here on Nine. Plenty of footy, plenty of other sport, and the best of the best all coming your way. If you're gonna call the game, you got to be from the Hall of Fame. Outstanding. How good. Yeah. The halcyon days of Wild Water Sports. I loved Wild Water Sports when I was a kid. The best. Four Remember hours, Tui's four ads? or five hours. I just used to. Two his ads. Mark yeah. Richards. Loved it. Yeah. The, the baseball ones. Here we go again. Manly and Para. No, that was, was that. Yeah, was that Two That was Two There was a baseball ad, and the bloke's name was. Um, it was my school teacher, Mr. Barracliffe. Oh. Mr. Barracliffe hit the ball. Yeah. And end up. End up scoring the run. Was Mr. Barracliffe a baseballer? Mr. Barracliffe was a baseballer. Right. For the Auburn Orioles. There you go. Mr. Barracliffe, great to have your company on Friday night. Your former Samaris, student has done well. St. Mary's High. Did I'm you? Sure. I went to St. Mary's High. I'm sure he had doubts. <laughs> I'm sure he had doubts at that time. I went to St. Mary's Senior High. Did you? Yeah. Did well, you when, I, when I was there, I'm a bit older than you. Yeah. When I was there, it was. No, oh, it was. It was well, there you go. Small it world. was. Uh, she was a rough old place. I could imagine you at school. He just... <laughs> Where's the footy field? Looking at every cobweb in the house. Oh, a cobweb. Friday in the eighth games last week. Uh, cheese rolling. Look, uh, there's, there is a movement... It's hard to beat cheese ...for rolling. cheese rolling to be included in Paris 2024. If you were going to put it in anywhere, it would be in Olympics in France. Mm. This week's instalment. <laughs> Just on cheese, we got to our hotel in Melbourne. Yes. And they had a, like a, one of those fancy platters with yeah. the, what's the meat? Anti-pasto platter. Mate. How good was it? I had to throw the cheese out the window. The it blue, stunk. The blue vein cheese. Yeah. <laughs> what? You can't throw out the window. What? It's very expensive. Va- it had the blue veins running through it. That's what it's called. Blue vein cheese? Yeah. And you threw it out. <laughs> 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 oh. I, it stunk the whole room. I, like, went, it, had, it was rotten. It had cling wrap over it. it wasn't no, but I opened it. It smells, it. mate. That's what it's, it does. That's what I'm saying. It stunk. That's what it's supposed to do. I don't know why watching. anyone would eat that shit. I did. <laughs> well, exactly. Did you eat the rest of it? No. It's, mate, if I come into a room you and want to say welcome, hmm. party pie and sausage. He wants a Vegemite. Vegemite's veg- toasted sandwich or something. Right. Not one of those fancy... What do they call it? A cheese platter. An anti-pasto platter. Anti-pasto. Where have you been living? You live in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. That's all I do over no, there. I'm still a boyfriend. Um, right. Doing his best. Uh, this, this sport... <laughs> doing his best. <laughs> and doing well at it. This sport is at the support of the 8th Immortal 
uh, Andrew Johns for inclusion of the Olympics. It's Turkish oil wrestling, mm. which uh, they also perform at Kens of Kensington. Um, was performed by ancient communities <laughs> 4,500 years ago. Here we go! Oh, <laughs> There's a Johns house. Now, wrestlers, wrestlers oil one another prior to the matches <laughs> as a demonstration of balance and mutual respect. Oh, this, oh he's got him! Oh, he's got him with the beauty. What's funny, Andrew, is that beep, if, if, beep. if a man defeats an older opponent, he kisses the latter's hand in a sign of respect for elders in Turkey. Wow. Get me to Turkey in the off-season. <laughs> yes, please. You, you have to oil your opponent. Oh, would you be okay with that? <laughs> who, who, would you, who would you not want to wrestle in a Turkish... John Hopperwadi. Not. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, man. Well done. That was quick. In that Scotland, was... the Kaba toss is usually made from a uh, larch tree. It can be between 16 to 20 feet, 5 to 6 metres tall, oh, yeah. and weighs something between 40 and 70 kilos. Was that a good toss? It's better if it's Simon. I'm assuming that's, wow. where, that's the idea. Yeah. To get oh, the. The little You've rotation. You've got to flip it end over end. Here we go. Go! Oh. That would take some doing, wouldn't it? How did Fitzy go? So no what's good. this in call? Fitzy won. Caber. Caber toss. Go! Here you are. Um, Geez, they're big men. Must be hard. Big backs. The record for the most Caber tosses in three minutes <laughs> is currently held, not by Andrew Johns, by the Canadian Danny Frame. Framey. Canadian. He managed to perform 16 successful Kaba tosses on July 20, 2018. 16 in three minutes. That would... That, ooh. It's like a telegraph pole. Yeah, between 40 and 70 kilos. Are we talking about the same thing here? Yeah. Time? <laughs> so I'm off a jail talk. <laughs> so yes to Turkish oil wrestling for the Freddie Nave games, but we're not so oh, sure about yeah. the Kaba toss. Oh, Kaba yes. toss is a bit dull. Yeah. yeah. Got when, medalist right on here. the fair Newton department, when he put his hands down his stride then, what was he grabbing? Was that like... Are you sure he put his hands down his stride? Or he Mate, he went feet? straight down his stride. Straight down Left his... hand and... Yeah. Oh, I've just been told by our rules official that you aren't allowed to grab genitalia. So what was he doing? Oh, as Borat says, <laughs> did they grab the anus? <laughs> <laughs> you seen Borat. He talks about going to the nightclub. <laughs> Hang on. He's gone straight Mate. up his kyber. Yeah, there's prostate stuff going on there. Very important to get that digital examination. Uh, boys. Mate, you... I wouldn't want to... With those fat fingers. <laughs> look at those things. Dr. Mate, Fittler. Those fingers, they need to go to Jenny Craig. <laughs> Imagine him slapping that rubber glove on those. <laughs> Straight down your strides, your little hairy Yeah, butt. I'd put two gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's get on some serious. Do you want to talk footy? Or... Yeah. I don't know how we transition from that to Lachlan Galvin. Um... New beginnings for the Tigers. It's the start of the Benji Marshall era. I've got to say, he's showing some, dare I say, balls. Yeah. Showing the young kid in, in yeah. his first game. Mm -hmm. And there's there's more than a little bit of symmetry between Benji to booing and then he's handed a boo to another 18-year-old. Yeah, well, I don't know much about Lachlan Galvin, so... There's Benj. Oh, what a, what a freak he was. Oh, oh, I hope he can do that. That'll help him. Now, he inspired a whole generation of kids. Mm. After he started... You'd see him at the park, they'd be all dancing around like Benji. Made the flick passes. Flick passes. The... Oh, oh, wow. wow. Good hair too, Benji. Oh, good shot. And the best pass I reckon I ever saw him throw was that one against Parramatta. You know where he went like that and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was pretty old. So you... Did you oh. play against Benji, Andrew? Oh, there I am now. Oh, there you are. Run, fatter. Oh, look at fatty. Look at fat ass. <laughs> was that you? Was that yeah. really you? Yeah. What? Actually, I think that guy. Oh, this, that, oh, this okay. one. This well, one's epic. No, 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 no. I no, think we beat him, beat him right on the... That. There's Benzie. Is that kids? <laughs> oh, Andrew. <laughs> God, what's happening? Oh, oh. fatigue. I'd made four tackles. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think if that's the game, I think we beat him right on the bell. This is the one where myself and Benzie oh. were arrested. Because I remember sitting there watching going, who is this young boy? Paul Fatawira missed him with the ankle tap. Over he goes. I played the grand final with him. What an absolute... Yeah, he did too. Paul Fatawira won yeah. 03, 04. Yeah. Uh, it's 05. 04, 03, 03 05. 05, yeah. 
He, um, he spearheaded that game up at Suncorp when they beat the Aussies. Was that a World Cup final? Or so? You know when Bill well, yeah. threw it back? Was that a Tri-Nations final? That oh, was no. oh, uh, Was that 04? 08? 08. That was one of his best games. 05 or 08? You, you know what? You can have parallels to Sean Johnson where we see that. It's like Sean when he first started. Then as he slows up and slows mm. up, Benji became that really yeah. good game manager. Like Sean's doing now. He had a couple of good years at South, I thought, Benji. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Played in the grand final. Yeah. Benji Marshall. Yeah. Played, played for grand. South Sydney. No, I'm being... I thought he went to the Dragons. He did. Yeah, then went to... Then he went to Brisbane. Then played for South. Then he played for South. Then he went to, went to the West Tigers and then went to South. Two years there. Okay. Two? Where? At South. Played yeah, in the grand you, final. Did you say played at the Broncos? Yes, mate. He had a season at Brisbane. Remember, he, run, he was going to retire. Played 13 games for Brisbane. Played 22 for South. I remember he played went, the grand he final. Went, he went yeah. to... Rub, he played for South in the grand final. Yes, mate. Yeah. It was his last game. Are you serious? Mm. He went good. He's coming off the bench a bit. Where's that medicinal marijuana going? Oh. Um, I the head knocks. How does... The, the curious thing about Benji taking over... I mean, they, they've struggled across the board, but particularly defensively. Now... Benji isn't a defensive-minded coach. Yeah. So what are you thinking about his approach to this, this well, he'd rebuild? Have, he'd have an assistant there who would be driving the defence. But is there, would there be a defensive focus? Brad, would there be a defensive focus on this team? No, he'll have balance. He'll have balance. He's not going to be going in there doing, you know... I, I can't remember him coming at any outlandish statements that we're just going to be all out attack. And, I mean, you can't, you can't ignore one without the other. One delivers the other. If your defence is good, it allows your attack to be better because you're down the other end of the field and then vice versa. Mm. If your attack's good, then you're defending them coming out of trouble. Is that the young fellow who's playing this week in the white head? Yeah, he played at the centres in the trial. He came on after a couple of minutes. Yeah, sorry, I, I haven't really heard too much about Lachlan. No. Well, I did the podcast I understand with he's Gus. as fit as fit. Well, he said, and Gus has been rapping him, says he's an origin really? player in the making. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Yeah. And you say he's a Parramatta junior? Uh, I'm, I said that. I, yeah. I'm sure I heard he was a Parramatta junior. You right. surprised? Are you surprised they've picked Galvin without Caesar? Mm, Caesar's on the bit. bench, so it's bit. Sullivan next to him. And Benji fought really hard to get Caesar back. I May, thought maybe they'd go with an experienced half. And you know what? Maybe game day Caesar might start. Although I think Gus did say, now I think about it, that Galvin's a left side player. Well, so is Caesar. Left, left foot kicker of Caesar. Yeah, yeah, they wouldn't work together. No, good luck. What a week. What a week. Preparing. First How great debut. Oh, it's so good. It's not How like exciting. he's up against a big pack of forwards or anything. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to be, yeah. better be on his game. Go, they kick it off and he's just looking at Josh. <laughs> just Pabalee. Pabalee. And then Tarpany just comes ste stepping, stepping across the field. And then Hudson Young comes. Actually, one of, the best, one of the best things, remember Ben Alexander said to Greg, he said, oh, I'm playing Crusher this week. Crusher Cleal. And Brady said, don't worry, he'll sidestep you. <laughs> <laughs> Crush was like 120 kilos sidestepping you. And fast, wasn't he? Oh, he was a great player. Another one back in the archives on the way to the break. Who knew back in the day that Paul Vorton gave his footy tips on the news every week? The Bulldogs have never won at ANZ Stadium. And they'll do it hard here tonight because the undefeated Broncos have scored 96 points in three matches here and let in only 20. I think the Broncos are specials. Tomorrow, I like St George, Manly, Cronulla and the Tigers... On Sunday, Canberra, Illawarra, Auckland, the Roosters and Newcastle should all record wins. Paul Vorton, National 9 News. Paul Vorton, uh, National 9 News. I didn't think the fat was a reporter. The fat's done everything. The fat has done everything. He has done impressed with the Dragons? Everything. I'm really yeah. impressed with the Dragons. They look fit. As soon as I saw M Moses Suley, I went, wow, they've worked hard. Mate, Sewer. Sewer. What, what about Molo? Big Frank Molo. Yeah, so I thought Sewer was dynamic. They look, you know, they look. They're a team. If they hold the ball, they are so powerful. Mm. You know, they are all built. They are just power. And this week, Luciano Lelu is in, Blake Laurie's in, and Harme Sella is on the extended bench. How good does he move? Say it again. It's like poetry. Le Luciano's back. Blake right. Laurie's back. They both missed last week. And Harme Sele is on the extended bench and could come in. So three dead-set first-grade wow. stars to come into that pack. Well, hopefully Luciano makes his, his season. He's a really talented player. Talent. Yeah. He's a really He's good been player. given some tools, speed, yeah. footwork and power. He needs, needs to... Yeah.
Mm. He had a good year a couple of years ago and I haven't seen much since. And I have to say, Cole Flanagan played well. Played really well. Mate, played that, really well. The combo. Made him, Little, Hunt, and then the fullback. Slime. Like that is, that was, yeah. they were, it's like they'd played together for years actually. It was good. They passed the ball to each other. Yeah. Half to half, half mm. to fullback. Dummy half gets out, half, brought off the dummy. I've Dummy's always good. liked the hooker. He's a good yeah. player, isn't he? Oh, he's a good player. He had a lot of those knees, didn't he? Knee injuries. Mm. He had two or three reconstructions on his knees. And the other team that was impressive against the odds was Canberra, that we covered them oh. up in Newcastle. Awesome. Yes. And we've kind of already touched on that with Jamal Fogarty. But to go up there and do what they did and press them in the finals last year, they go back there to kick off 2024 and get the job done. A yeah, full house at Newcastle, that's fascinating. <coughs> Jeez, Young Mule's a good player, isn't he? Um, Zach Hoskins. Yeah. Yeah. But once again, the, the halfback's performance, Jamal Fogarty. They're a well balanced and They've got team, someone they? back. Sebastian Chris is back and Nick Chotrich has gone to the bench. But they are, you know what they did? They had a plan. They just kept the ball tight. Every time they got the ball down there, like it was Papa Lee, like attacking the line, Tarpane attacking the line. And then they either kicked above the halfback. Jeez, that was important. Or kicked to the left, mm. left upright. That was it. And they just kept doing it. They never stopped. That's so smart. From Newcastle Rick. just got bored. What did you think of uh, the young Englishman, Smithies? Oh, he, was, he had so much footy in him. He's passing before the line. Well, Loves an Englishman, to... Ricky, doesn't he? Yeah. Went and spoke to him after the game. Good and understanding. He was... Yeah, he was OK. But they did a good job. They had all their parents there. Mm. Obviously, a few of the English people. And Are they've got there. depth, Canberra. Is their reserve grade smashed Newcastle. You know why they go to England? There's a lot of a lot of players won't go to the ACT to Canberra. Um, so the Englishmen over the years, Hodgson, Whitehead, George Williams, Bateman, they've had. But then go back into the 90s when they had great success. They they recruited as Smithies. He looks like a. Oh, what about <laughs> Mellon? It's tough. They recruited out of Queensland in the early 90s. Mal, uh, Belcher, Jackson, Jackson Sam Backer, Kevin Walters, Coyne, Kevin Walters. So they pick out areas and just target those, those spots. Um, the late, great Peter Mulholland. They did in the Kiwis. It was Lomax, Pongia, Pongia, Pongia Ruben, Ruben Wiki, Wiki, Sean Hoppy, yeah. Brent Todd. Brent Todd. So they get, um, who did I say, Peter Mulholland, uh, the late, really great um, recruitment. I think they got their heads together and went to England. Mm. Did you know of Elliot Whitehead before he came no. out? Did and you did, know of John Bateman? Didn't know of Smitty's. Josh Hodson? Yeah. No. None of them. Not even Smithies. I knew George Williams, obviously, as being a halfback, but... Why would you want to go and live in the ACT? Haven't you heard of Fish Week? Mate, inter internet. You don't need to go there anymore. No, fireworks, you idiot. Yeah, sure. Now, I mentioned earlier, Ricky's <laughs> inspiration for the Chicks week ahead. Where's That's Kate? Kate's in India. She's got... No, she's in Italy. In she's Italy. <laughs> how, long's, how long's Kate away for? Another ten days. I've got these wooden mitts that I... <laughs> <laughs> How's your data going? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, mate. We need to cut this out. Yeah. What, um, <laughs> how, how coping is single dad life? Oh, it's Daddy fine. Daycare. I've had practice in the past. <laughs> <laughs> He's Rick's inspiration for the week. I mentioned it earlier in the show. This is the inspiring sign in the Raiders dressing room. Kids, Can look away. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Ricky Stewart, isn't it? Yeah. He's the best. Hey, got him up. If anyone can get a team up, make him believe. He's uh, he's great at that. Have you got any Ricky coaching stories? Oh. Only <laughs> get you on the get you on the <laughs> roller. He was oh, he was just mad. He was just at it all the time. Always, you know. How long did he coach you for? How many years? Uh, mate, we won. We're in three grand finals. Yeah. Uh, two oh three oh four. Do you remember he played for Canterbury? Yeah, I remember he played for Canterbury he's Brad because. Clyde. It was relentless then to... <laughs> um, yeah. Did he coach you in Origin? No. He was no. great there. He just... He got Origin. He got it. Mm. We uh, told you last week about uh, Freddie and Brandy and Royce and all those sledges when he kicked the ball in his first game. We caught up with Cohen Hess during the off-season and he told us a fantastic yarn about being sledged onto boot by his own teammate, Jonathan Thurston. Have a look. We were talking about this the other day, but um, I don't know, it would have been early on in my career. We were on the field and I did a very poorly 
executed offload and he ran over to me and he said, if you ever offload the ball again, I'll cut your arm off. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that's something that just always stuck in my mind. Great after, the, after the game, he apologised and said it was this in the moment type thing. But um, yeah, that's something that stuck with me and I'll never forget. Which arm, left or right? It'd be a big arm, wouldn't it? I've heard he's, uh, yeah, he's big arms. We, 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 we touched on this. You, you're very cheeky today. Um, so, outside of Ricky Stewart, what, what are the best sledges you got that you can broadcast? The Steve Walters one for Benny Elias was a good one. They got to a scrum, and that's when Steve Walters just took <laughs> over Benny for the Australian team. And Benny was coming to the scrum a bit slow. He said, hurry up, Benny. I've got a test match to play on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't uh, repeat. I can't repeat a lot of them. Mm. Gus and Daryl, Daryl Brown. Is that a good one? Yeah. So yeah, they're, <laughs> they're playing reserve grade and they're going backwards at Belmore, and they used to sit so close to you at the back. And they said, Gus, when do you go back to Penrith? And then Daryl Brown walked down, put his arm around him, and said, Don't worry about them. He said, and the bloke calls out. And take your fat mate with you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great one. Steve Wall was sledging someone in a test match and the bloke hit back and said, well, at least I'm the best player in my family. <laughs> um, Justin Hodges. So here's one. Oh, is this the Bedsy? Let's have a look. Oh, Bedsy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's a bit rough. It's like killing Bambi. I know you can't you sledge Bedsy. Bedsy. Hey, Bedsy little hip. Hodjo would bar no one. <laughs> and what about JT at Leichhardt? This is the best one. What's this one? Hey, Sebastian! <laughs> Where's your Queensland spirit now, you dumb prick? <laughs> That's been I can. You know, the average three times a year, first. <laughs> Oh, that is Where's, so... Where's the camera there in the audio? Oh, no. that was a phone. That's a mobile phone. phone. Oh. I heard a phone, camera phones. <laughs> so this year we're going to do the Fred in the Eighth medal, which means the boys are going to give 3-2-1 each week. So not every game. So, so, Best so, players so, so, of the, so, so, of the whoa, week. Fred in the Eighth medal? Yeah. Have we got the medal ready to go? Not yet. It's been worked What about we go Fred in the Eighth luncheon? And we'll take him to lunch. There you go. But they, what, if they, what if they refuse? <laughs> well, they won't refuse, trust me. Yeah, they won't. It'll be the end of the year. Because the war stories will come out and the phones will be away. Right. Oh, Jamal Fogarty. Three points each, eh? Mm. Jeez. Jeremiah Nane. Oh. What a supreme athlete. He looks like he's got bigger, like, around upper body. He, he, could, he could dominate this Back season. Back rowers normally, the big back rowers aren't that hard to tackle. But the ones that have got footwork, like him, oh, it'd be a nightmare. Awful. He, catch, he can catch the ball and move... As he's catching the ball, he's got mm. that right foot step. They Biden. are they are such a good team on paper. Like, it, do you think is there signs? I know it's only one game. Is there signs that they've got that twenty twenty two form back? Yep. Do you reckon? In Too one soon? game, I saw it. I reckon yeah. in one game, they just looked so much fresher than they did last year. Mm. Um, if you. <laughs> I've just had a suggestion in my ear. I don't know if we should do this, but for a, 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 you can suggest in the comments what the winner of the Fred of the Eighth Medal should get as a prize. There you go. Where, hypothetically, where would we take them for lunch? Where would I take someone? The Chloe. Yeah, just go to a pub. Mm. That'd be the best go. Into the rocks would be fun. Yeah, the rocks is good. What, you know where you used to live? Those old pubs up on the... Yeah. What, what are they called? Fortune of War or something? The Glenmore. Fortune of War. There's, there's about the eight of them. Yep. There's, oh. there's the one around the corner where the Bulldogs um, oh, yeah. got in trouble yeah, for yeah. mooning someone on no, the no, balcony. Adam Elliott was singing <laughs> Sweet Caroline right. with limited clothes on. <laughs> what was the Chinese place we used to go to? The Bobby feed? Chow? Bobby Chow's. Yeah, that was great. Where's that? That was on Kent Street. I lived on Kent Street. Oh, right. That uh, was our the rocks. origin meal the night after the Bucks. Mm. Ah, the Bucks. The bonding night. Right. Is he still there? Uh, Bobby Chels, I don't think so. The oh. hotel's still there. The pub's still there. Oh, right. Near the Palisades. You know where the Palisades is? 
Then the Lord Nelson. Lord Nelson. Lord Nelson's the grey building on oh, the yes, corner. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's like across the road. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah nice. nice. Freddie in the eighth medal, whoever wins it. The we'll do a pub crawl the Monday, through the rocks. The Monday before grand final. Old school pub crawl need to through the rocks. After the grand final. <laughs> Mate, I'm away after the grand final. What so is... hopefully it's someone who's not in the grand final. That's what I'm going to say. But if they are in the grand final, they can have a roster day off and come on the drink. Because what, Freddie's the grand back. Before the grand final? He's, come, he's back. Yeah, I know. Come back to the dark side. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It's so good. <laughs> when he's drinking, then the thumbs come out. You I look, go, yeah, he's You back. look so much more relaxed now you're not coaching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thursday night footy. I've got to say, this is a cracking round. There's, there's not one dead game in the whole, yeah. whole weekend. Broncos, Rabbits, no Jai Arrow. Now, it's a bit of a sensational headline to say he could be out for the season. I don't know if that's the case. They're saying... Four like, weeks, but if it's really bad, but potentially longer. Um, Tommy Campbell Graham might be out for an extended. Yeah, he's, extended yeah. he's had an operation he's, on his sternum. He's gone to the back part of the year. Yeah. Um, they're still missing Jack. depth in the centres, and you, you take Jai Arrow out of it, that puts a lot of pressure on their edges. Oh, what about that ball from Cody? Mm. Yeah, a lot of pressure on their edges. And Broncos, if there was one team hamstrung because of this play with the shorter field in Vegas, it was the Broncos. Yeah. Fast track, I think they'll explode. And after the stuff with Ezra Mam this week, you think they're just going to go out there and put on a show? Adam Reynolds against his old club always lifts. The one thing South do well, though, is if they can just march up the field, that sort of Wayne Bennett style, and then Cody just pulls the trigger, when, and he doesn't miss often. Mm. They've, got, doesn't miss they've still got four tries in them. It's where okay. the Broncos can score five, I reckon. All right. Friday night footy, Blue Bet Stadium, Penrith. It's that old battle that never... Uh, Oh, this is the cliche everyone gets wrong. Never fails to disappoint. disappoint. See, if you say that, it always disappoints. If you say it never fails to disappoint, it means it always disappoints. Disappoint. So it never fails to impress. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm glad I pulled myself up. Um, that, it's weird how apparent. But they actually have the mock on Penrith. Well, they got a style of play which troubles them. They offload the ball. Offload, they're, yeah. They're unpredictable. Unpredictable. You know, a big forward pack, junior. Paulo, the offloads. What the offloads lock. end Jeez, up? Lots of good players. What the offloads end up? The other day, it was at 14 nil. It was 14 offloads, and the dogs were nil offloads. Wait, what, what did you see in Penrith's attack last week? Uh, they, hard, clearly, they it was slippery. It was so slippery. Yeah. It's hard to get a gauge on. So do you know what they did that last year? World Club Challenge, they barely scored a try. They got beat by Brisbane, they barely scored a try. I think it was up to round three or four where they actually put uh, three or four tries on. You worried so, about their bench without Spencer coming on? When uh, well, Sorensen's back. This when week. Fisher, Harris, and Moses mm. Leo to go off, they lose that punch in the middle, which is obviously they're two of the best front rowers. So Smith and Henry are their their middles on the bench. Yeah. Uh, I think Garner's gone back to the bench for Sorensen and Sonny Luke stays. Do Penrith play a bit across the field sometimes? Who? Penrith. They play a bit side to side. What they play a bit sideways. Well, it was hard the other night because it's hard to move the ball laterally quickly. No, no, Mitch I love the way they attack. They'll be better for the run. Do you power a hope, Freddie? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well and truly. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well and truly. And then this is the game that Andrew Johns is saying could be the greatest game ever. Is that what you said? No, I said it'll be oh, an epic. Three years. Could be the best, play with, best, team with, uh, best game we've seen in a couple of years. So best game ever. Manly Roosters over at Four Pines, Brookie. Doesn't matter who you support, be in front of the television at 3 o'clock on Sunday. Yep. I reckon I had a couple of years there where we played some of the best games ever. At Brookie? Yeah, the yeah. Roosters are manly. In like 96, 97, around then. Remember that game you were up by about 16? Up by 20. And then they just came to life. Beaver and Cliffy. Cl <laughs> Cliffy just killed us. Mm. He was such a good player. Yeah, this is a lot. I, I yeah. just, Beaver killed us. I can't good. wait for this game. Uh, Dom can't Young's wait. in. Dominic, yeah. Let's see, uh, that's the one that tilts me towards the Roosters. Dom Young's in. And Saab's out. Yeah. Very similar players. Like, they score a lot of tries from the other end of the field. They're wingers. Bruce Dominic Evan Young Evan. and Anthony Tupa. Both 6'5". Daniel five. Tupa. Daniel. And then you look at the other blokes. Joe Manu's tall and then mm. Joseph. So mm. here. Yeah. He's, mate, he's got to be 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, mm. So who's uh, Garrick's in the centres? Kohler. Kohler. They've, they've brought in um, Tommy Talao's going to play. So he's replaced he's on the wing. Sub, he's a good player. Yeah, I mean, he's a good player. He can play everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. 
So you're saying there's a height advantage out wide for the Roosters, though? Well, no, we've told me there now. No? Oh, so who's the other winger? Jackson Paulo. Jackson Paulo. If they can get in attacking area, there's a real advantage. Mm. They can land it on the spot. Yep, this will be a classic. Best game ever. Big crowd. Sunday what about afternoon? the weather? It's fine. Sunday? Yeah. Now, before... Can we... Can we oh, mate, trust me. I do surf reports. When's the rain coming? I think Friday, there's 50% chance of rain. Well, there's a bit of rain over the weekend. Saturday, so it was raining for sure. You did a weather report on this show last year, and it was brilliant. With Peter Oban sitting right here. Yeah. yeah. How is Pete? Good. Good. Watches the show every week. G'day, Pete. G'day, Jess. I know you're a big fan of the show as well. Um, just before we go, happy birthday to a former teammate of Brad Fittler, one of the great outside backs. Matt Singh. Gary, Gary Freeman. Brandy, Freddie, Maddie Singh. God, beats Brett Rodwell. I see Brett Rodwell every week. Our kids play together. Now, I what a to... player Matt Singh was. And talk about the Queensland jersey thing. He was a superman for Queensland, yep. wasn't he? And I reckon, he's, I reckon he held up more tries than any other player I've known. Yeah. He was so strong. That I, was a handy back. I got a photo at home. When we used to go on tour, I always, I always used to get the disposable and just take so many photos and get home and develop. And there's a photo on PNG of me and Matt Singh. He used to go out in the boat fishing and yeah. stuff. And we're standing there with beer. Mate, I look like Arthur Dunger. <laughs> <laughs> and he is just... You know when they get the abs there yeah. on the side and they got that V there? And, mate, honestly, I must have had a big off-season because my lud... Fat guts and fat ass. He was always very fit. And he's just strong, ripped. healthy. Mm. Mm. What's he doing now? He's, he's still up in Townsville. He, he's he... back up. I think he moved back up to Rocky. He was up in Townsville for a long time, and I think he went back to Rockhampton. Right. They signed him as a halfback. Yeah, he signed a pair of Gus tells that story. Yeah, Gus tells well, the Jim story. Jim Jones signed him, and Gus saw him and said he can't pass and he can't <laughs> kick and he can't do anything else. So they played him in the centres, Dreamy still... Plains. Yeah. And then brought him up and he scored a million tries playing for Emmy Plains and then picked in first grade and so we went, never played a reserve grade game again. We went to the Roosters together. Yeah. Did he get, oh, you went to the Roosters? Yeah. yeah. He had a couple of years there. I think he left, I reckon, after 2000. I think it was he in the 2000 Grand Final. I don't know. Oh, he played in, in the... 99. Did he play in the 05 Grand Final for North Queensland? He would have. Yeah, North Queensland. Yeah. And scored a try, yeah. There you go. Happy birthday, Matt Singh. One of the great outside backs. I just wanted to show that because a pretty handy side there. Mm. Gary Freeman, Brandy, Freddie. What year was that? Did you say? That would have been, been nine, nine, three, four, three. I'm trying to think. Think about the jerseys. Prospect the electricity. Prospect electricity because Gerds was there and mm. Brandy was there. Brandy, le Brandy went to the Warriors. Mm. In, in 95. In 95. So it must have been 93, 94. Mm. Danny Farrah. He was a tough little dude. They were yeah. the days. That's uh, another gripping edition of Freddie and the Eight. Thankfully, we haven't defamed too many people on the show this week, I don't think. Our previous, previous episodes in the hands of the lawyers as we speak. See you at the footy over the weekend, boys. It's going to be a beauty. An epic Sunday. See you next week. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And of course, my favourite, Freddie Nio. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.